Это пропустил сумку Владивосток. Вот у меня стрелика едет на мотоцикле в Москву. Да. Вы говорите по-русски? А, немножко. Вы что, собираетесь проехать на мотоцикле до Москвы? Да. Скажите, а вы едете одни? Да. Officers, you have six seconds to complete this round. Eyes and ears on. for a visa. The civilian highway is not yet um, fully secure. There are reports of bandits who prey on tourists. I'm a police officer. I'm trained in self-defense. I did do the key. These two plan to travel from Vladivostok to Moscow by motorcycle. I regret that uh, I cannot help you. one doctor uh, here are some messages none of them seem urgent I'm sorry you're leaving I'll miss you I've enjoyed working here so what have you got planned for your first day of freedom well tonight my husband and I are heading down the south coast your final check and a bonus thank you anything else I can do well there is one thing this is a bit embarrassing. You know that my husband works as a private investigator? Uh, no. Well, last year Vic was asked by a man to check up on his wife. Vic did, and he took these. You and Mrs. Parsons were very close. What is this all about? Well, Vic's rather old-fashioned. He feels it's not appropriate for a doctor to be involved with a patient. 
He wants to send the photos to the medical board. Well, what does Vic want exactly? 200,000. The images are currently on a hard drive, which will be deleted when Vic receives the money. You have my word. Your word? Really? I'm sorry to end on this note, Dr. McLean. It must be very distressing for you. Payment by the end of next week. I still feel like I'm intruding. They all invited you. Hi, darling. Hi, Dad. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Okay? Yep. Good to see you, Brad. Thank you for coming. You're welcome, sir. I would now ask Peter's brother Edward to read the eulogy. Peter was two years older than me. Sometimes brothers get on, sometimes they don't. It would be inappropriate for me to now praise Peter excessively just because he's passed on. He wouldn't want that. It's no secret he had his faults. He fought a courageous battle against alcoholism. He fought a courageous battle against gambling. He tried his best to remain on good terms with his ex-wives. Tried his best to remain on good terms with his children. All of the money he borrowed from Various relatives. He did his best to pay most of it back. That's Pete. Not a saint, but always good entertainment value. We'll miss him. How'd it go? No probs. So we'll pay up? I think so. Good girl. See, it's like I told you, it's all in the planning. Did he get shitty? Not much. All right. Well, I'm off home. I'll catch you later. Hey, Susie. You okay? It's been a long day at the office. Long day? It's only 2.30. <laughs> I believe in truth in advertising, but I'm not sure if I believe in truth at funerals. Dad? Impressive. If you couldn't have found anything nice to say, I don't think you should have done the eulogy. Grandpa. Hello, young Stephanie. Hi. I'd like you to meet Brad Donnelly. This is my grandfather, Edward McLean. I hear you're in the US Air Force. Oh, by the pilot training school. Good for you. Flying a plane's one ambition I never fulfilled. Oh, it's never too late to learn. <laughs> You'll be at Stephanie's graduation dinner tonight? He will. Can I get you a drink, sir? Oh, please, Brad. Enough with the sir. Dad. I'm sorry, sweetness. 
Just thinking about a patient. Oh, forget the patients. Tonight's Steph's night, remember? I'm sorry, Brad. It's just that we don't use that word sir much in this country. Where I come from, it's almost obligatory. Ladies and gentlemen, will you kindly take your seats? Yes, me old mate. Jeff Driscoll, you old rogue. I thought you'd left the police force. <laughs> mate, I thought they booted you out of the police force. Yeah, it's true. They did. So what are you doing now? I joined the opposition. I'm a private dick. <laughs> I might have known. Do you know when I went to Europe for a month recently, I managed with one suitcase and one tube of mascara. Jeez, Mum, how brave. Oh, it really wasn't that difficult. You don't have to travel with lots of suitcases on these trips. But earlier today, I had a run-in with one of your competitors, Victor Todd. Victor bloody Todd? What are you doing with that prick? His wife used to be my receptionist. Keep away from him, mate. He's bad news. Brad, did you ever read that book by Tom Wolfe about the first astronauts? Actually, I did, Jack. He wrote that fighter pilots were the most arrogant group he'd ever met. I can't imagine why he'd write such a thing. <laughs> Listen, son, I'm sure you get a buzz out of flying, but if you want to make serious money, my advice is to get into real estate. Grandpa's been trying to get me to leave the police force for years. Get into real estate to make some serious money. Mm, well, she can laugh, but I currently own seven properties. By the time I die, it could be up to the top of A colleague of mine is being blackmailed. He was indiscreet. With the patient. And Victor's screwing him for... 200,000. And the patient involved? Uh, she's no longer involved, she's gone overseas. Barry, mate. Didn't they teach you at med school, don't screw the patients, you stupid prick. Elvis Presley? <laughs> Elton Jack. What were you doing when you were our age? He was purely interested in making money. Where did you guys meet? It's a long story. Guess who picked me up for speeding? <laughs> <laughs> He's got photos of me with a patient. If I don't come up with 200 grand by the end of the week, he's going to show them to the medical board. Bloody Victor. Passes himself off as a private investigator, but his business is blackmail. I, I take it he's got copies of this photo stashed all over the place? Well, apparently not. His wife tells me they're just on the hard drive. If, if she's telling you the truth, then you've got three choices. One pay up, give him the money. Wait, I don't have 200,000 bucks lying around. Well, two is come clean, fess up, tell Ann, tell the medical board, cop it sweet. Or option three is fight fire with fire. Meaning what? Oh, we could break into his office, rip off his hard drive, take off with his, his discs, <laughs> his cameras, his photos, his bloody files, a whole lot. Wonderful, mate. Just a quick little burglary, then I'm in the shit even deeper. That piece of piss, mate, we'd be in and out of there in 15 minutes. But alternatively, you could do nothing. Hmm? Get yourself struck off, lose your marriage, public humiliation. Your kids won't talk to you. Hmm? I will not be destroyed by some sleazy blackmailer. So what's it going to be then, eh? His wife did tell me they'd be out of town tonight. Bullshit. Oh, mate, we can do this tonight. Between main course and dessert. Like, won't this guy of all people have all sorts of security? Bit of respect, please. Anything Todd's got, I can handle. But what if he's got other photographs stashed at his home or in his car or at his work? Well, that's just a risk you're going to have to take. Mm. Give us your card. I'm going to go and check out Todd's office. I'll call you shortly to go. Go. Enjoy your daughter's graduation. You're late. We're supposed to go in ten minutes. I don't feel so good. Drive down the coast and a few drinks will fix that. I don't think so. What's the problem? I'm late because I stopped at the chemist on the way home. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Great, just what we need. 
How far are you? About seven weeks. Easy fix then. I thought maybe we. There's could... no way we're keeping it. If this nausea doesn't settle, you go to the meet. I'll stay at the motel. Suit yourself. Excuse me. Yes? Hey, it's me. Tell him you'll be back in half an hour. Meet me outside. Uh, an emergency at the hospital. I'll be back in 25 minutes. Sure. A young girl I saw was very sick. It may be meningococcus. I think I missed it. Go. This is dumb, mate. Why am I doing this? Because, Barry, mate, you are deep in the shit. Look at our brains, bloody stupid. No, he's crying over spilt sperm, mate. Well, what have you learned in the last half an hour? Victor's security is piss weak. So are we on for this or not? Let's go. It's a matter of elegance and imagination. Mm. How's your archery going, David? Pretty good. Uh, hopefully I might make the state team. Ladies and gentlemen, Distinguished guests, fellow officers, and members of the force. It is now my very great pleasure to officially acknowledge and to formally welcome our graduating class of police detectives. Those of you here tonight who are family and friends will realize that graduating as a police detective is no small achievement and you and the graduates can feel rightly proud. These days, of course, we have new techniques, new technologies, DNA, computer analysis, psychological profiling, to mention but a few. Nevertheless, with all these advances, we still need good quality troops on the ground. And this year's graduating class is one of the best. Jeff, thanks a million, I think. I need a beer. After graduation, Stan, what happens next? Well, I start work with Detective Sergeant Hughes for six weeks. Then I've been granted a month leave of absence. To do what? Brad and I are going to motorbike across Russia, from Vladivostok to Moscow. You're going to motorcycle across Russia? Siberia is the last great motorbike challenge. They completed the highway a few years ago. Why didn't you tell me? She'll be okay, Anne. I don't suppose you two speak any Russian by any chance. How was the patient? False alarm. It wasn't meningococcus, probably rubella. So you miss the formal speeches for nothing? I'm sorry, love. I'm here to stay. Can I use your phone? Uh, Mr. Victor Todd? Uh, this is the police, Mr. Todd. I'm afraid there has been a burglary at your office. M Mr. Todd? Mr. Todd? Mr. Todd? Ah, it's horrible. Mr. Todd? Yes. This is Pacific Security, Mr. Todd. Did you call me a minute ago? No, that wasn't us. I'm afraid there appears to be a break in at your office. Well, I'm out of town down the coast. What have they done? And it seems they've mainly told your computers. No other damage is obvious. All right, I'll be there in an hour and a half.
Your daughter graduates as a police detective. That's a wonderful achievement for a young woman. You might have shown a bit more enthusiasm. Mr. Todd, seems your computers have been gutted. No big deal, nothing special on them. Yeah, right, just weather reports. I'm not interested in involving the police in this. Don't believe I've had sex with a police detective. Sure, when you get back to the States, you'll find someone in a police department who'll accommodate you? I don't know I can wait that long. Thought you fighter pilots were chosen for your discipline and self-restraint. I struggled with that part of the entrance exam. Miss McLean. Yes, what is it? It's Bill. I want to go out for some ciggies. Get with your car's blocking the drive. We're trying to have sex here, man. I'm sorry. I'll wait till you're finished. <laughs> Good. You Americans have a reputation of getting things done ever so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. They removed the hard drives, USBs, just about everything. You have backup, I take it. How could you not have backup? That is the most basic of basic rules. Did you tell Dr. McLean that we'd be away for the night? Stupid cow! It seems... We both screwed up. Well, I've been thinking all night, and this pregnancy of yours might save us. You want me to keep it? No, I don't want you to keep it. The point is, can we use it? I think we can. Hello. Hello, how can I help? Detective McLean to see Detective Sergeant Hughes, please. I'll get it for you. Uh, the Detective McLean to see you, sir. Give me right in. Thank you. Client. Detective Sergeant Hughes. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Come on through. Thank you. It's your desk. Okay, hot shot. Time to earn a living. When would you like all these done by? I'll say Monday morning. Well, according to our test, Mr. Robinson, you have an underactive thyroid. That's why you've been feeling run down. And what caused that? Well, often we're not sure. But it is easy to correct. You know, you're the third doctor we've seen about this situation. How is it going? The Russian consulate wouldn't issue us with our visas. In Russia, it's the best that you never ask for a visa. Well, how do you get in? I will arrange for you to be officially invited to give a speech to the Moscow police. And what am I going to talk about? Oh, relax. You won't have to give a speech. It's just the way we break the system. Valentina, <clears throat> what do you personally think about riding across Siberia on a motorcycle? If I was your age, I would be coming with you. Vladivostok? Khabarovsk? Khabarovsk. Khabarovsk. 
Irtuk Irkusk via Lake Bakal in <laughs> Moscow. Six thousand miles. Ten thousand kilometers. Hmm. <laughs> I can see it now. Book rights, television interviews, movie deals. Yeah. Val Kilmer playing yours truly. He's way too good looking. Don't worry about these two, they're being stupid. They have an idea that you might be pregnant. I don't want to talk about it. Yes, Suze. If it's good news, share it with your friends. The timing's not good. Hey. You'll be okay. Yep. Right, I'll get back to it. So who's the fella? It's Brad. You two are an item. We're just friends, that's all. So they stopped using their line years ago. All right, we have a four-step program. In step one, I take some blood. You're not going to give me any trouble. I'm almost 30 and Look, I... Look, the next pregnancy you can keep. All right, let me slave. Okay, lie down. Step one completed. So, what are you up to on your leave of absence? Well, you might think this is a little crazy, but Brad and I are going to motorbike across Russia. Okay, so this is the uterus here, and here's the sac of fluid here, and that's your baby there. Can we have some pictures? Yeah, sure. Step two completed. This is my wife, Mrs. Jones. She has an appointment. Very well. Have you fasted, Mrs. Jones? Since midnight. And how would you like to pay? Credit card? Cash. OK. Are you aware of the cost? Yeah, I'm aware of the cost. If you would just sign the consent form here, please. Now, if you just pop on one of these gowns, you can still change your mind. No, I can't.
Excuse me, Mr. Jones. Susan will be out in a moment. How is she? Ah, oh, good. She's awake and alert and sitting up having a cup of tea. So everything went all right then? Yes. Now, here's a list of instructions and a script for antibiotics. One a day for six days. Now, Susan should not drive a car for the next 24 hours. And if you've got any concerns, please give us a call. Fair enough. I'll wait in the car. You okay? Yep. Alright then, that's step three completed. And we got half an hour. You ready? Just get it over with. Brave girl. Get an ambulance. Tell him she's pregnant. Will the baby be okay? They'll do their best. Check your pulse for me. I'm Dr. Chambers. Your wife's okay. She does have a bruised leg and some lacerations. But? We've done an ultrasound scan on the uterus. There is no longer a viable pregnancy. So what happened? I'm afraid the trauma and shock seem to have caused your wife to miscarry. She'll be devastated. This scan photo was only taken this morning. It's very unfortunate. I'm sorry. I got a photo of the car that hit her. It was quick thinking. Police will find that very useful. Can I help you? I'm Sergeant Parker. This is Constable McGrath. We're investigating a traffic accident that happened earlier today. Well, I haven't been involved in any traffic accident. No, but we believe this BMW was. I understand it's registered in your wife's name. She's all right. Yes, we have no reason to believe that your wife was injured. Can we speak to her now, please, sir? Well, she's probably inside. Anne? Are you okay? Yes. There are two police officers here to see you. I'm Sergeant Parker, ma'am. This is Constable McGrath. We're investigating a traffic accident that happened earlier today. Yes. Is it possible that while driving your BMW this afternoon you might have hit a pedestrian? No. Perhaps you're watching out for traffic and didn't see someone step close to the car? I'm, I'm sure if I'd hit someone I, I would be aware of it. But who was hit? A Mrs Susan Todd. 
Susan Todd. Do you mean my husband's receptionist? That's correct. And now she's saying that my wife has hit her. The incident took place outside the hair salon in Young Street. Well, it, it's true. I, I had my hair done there this afternoon. What time would that have been approximately? Oh, um, 3.30. Around that time, Mrs Todd was found lying in the road outside the salon. She was admitted to hospital with cuts and abrasions to her leg. Now, the hospital inform us that prior to the accident, she was pregnant, but has since miscarried. Oh. Uh, maybe she just, I don't know, fainted as I drove away. There appears to be blood on the left-hand front bumper of your car. Oh. So what happens from here, Sergeant? The car will need to be impounded and examined. Could I have the keys, please, Mrs McLean? <laughs> How's the hot shot pilot? Not bad. We going salsa dancing tonight? We have to drop by Mum's first. Um, David left a message on my phone saying that Mum's car's been in an accident. Is she mm. okay? Oh, she's not injured. Let's go. Mum hit a pedestrian. Did you? I don't know now. Yes, I did. Is the person okay? Yes and no. Apparently she had a miscarriage. Dad's secretary, Susan Todd. Susan Todd? Were you backing out of the surgery? No, I was at the hairdressers and I apparently brushed her as I drove away. But I didn't see her. I think I'll go down to the hospital and find out exactly what happened. Mum, have you seen my foundation? I've got to leave in 15 minutes. Brad and I were going to go out, but I'll stay if you prefer. I'll handle it. Sister? I'm Dr McLean. Uh, Mrs Todd used to work for me. I was wondering how she's doing. She's stable. Buzz me if you need any more painkillers. So, how are you? Surviving. I'm truly sorry you lost your baby. Yes. But I'm puzzled to know what happened. Your wife hit me with her car and didn't stop. Well, Anne is very upset. She had no idea she hit you. The police think differently. Their investigations aren't complete yet. Vic's very upset. Especially since his office was burgled the other night. He feels that my termination bonus should go ahead as planned. Or he will pursue criminal charges against your wife for the hit and run. Plus the loss of the baby. As I said, the investigations aren't finalised yet. Vic would like payment by the end of the week or he will press charges. So what have we got? Well, the DNA that we extracted off the bumper bar of the vehicle was a match for Mrs Todd's. 
And there's absolutely no doubt in your mind? No doubt at all. Oh, g'day, Dave. G'day, mate. How are you? Dave Parker, have you met Stephanie McLean? How do you do? Dave Parker, how are you? Any chance I can have a chat to Stephanie from him? Yeah, sure, mate. I'm going to go to a meeting anyway. Is this about the traffic incident? I'm afraid so. I thought as a courtesy I should keep you informed. Unfortunately, the DNA evidence on the front bumper is an exact match for Susan Todd. There's no doubt that your mother's car hit Mrs Todd. My mother wouldn't drive away from a car accident. It was broad daylight. How does someone hit a pedestrian and not see them in broad daylight? Can I ask, is your mother on any form of medication? Not that I'm aware of. Is there any possibility of psychological issues? Is my mother mentally disturbed? No, she's not. And I can only assume that in some way she didn't see Mrs Todd approaching. Yes? Doctor, there's quite a crowd out here. Just one more call. Uh, Jeff? It's Barry. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm in trouble. Again. I agree with you, it's got to be some sort of a setup. But I can't work out how they're pulling that off. Perhaps she was already having a miscarriage and she deliberately positioned herself next to Anne's car, faking a collapse. I presume they're still threatening you with the medical board? Not a word. Nothing. Sweet nothing. No. You realise what this means, don't you? If they had even one photo of you, they wouldn't be pulling this stunt. You can say that, but Anne is still facing a hit-and-run charge. Yeah, but at worst she'll get a fine, maybe lose a licence for a bit. Why should she? She's completely innocent. Well, mate, you could always try the honesty option. And I've been having an affair with a patient. Stephanie, dear, I've been involved in a burglary. I'm tempted, let me tell you. Well, I wouldn't if I was you. Women just don't understand. Betrayal is just part of the human experience. Like puberty, we all go through it. We all survive. Not bad, huh? Ah, God, yeah. It's beautiful. Don't get views like this back home. Do you think we're being a bit ambitious about this Russian trip? Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> Well, it seems that Anne was not in a particular hurry. She was not drunk. She was not on any medication. But perhaps she was looking the other way before pulling out and missed the sudden approach of Mrs. Todd. No, I didn't. I see three possible charges here. Negligent driving, dangerous driving, and dangerous driving causing grievous bodily harm. But Anne, you have an impeccable driving record. So I don't think the court would take any harsh of view of that unfortunate accident. There may be some substantial fine though and a possible license suspension. But, but no one's going to go to prison for this. Hi sweetie. Oh, we feel terrible about what happened to you. You all right? How are you feeling? I'll be okay. That driver, what she did to you, was criminal. I hope you're going to sue her. It wasn't really her fault. You are about to have your first baby and she runs you down in broad daylight. Have they got to you? You're trying to protect her because she's the doctor's wife. Pam, can I talk to you alone? Sure, sweetie. Give us a moment, will you? Stop fidgeting. This woman has one bump and the pregnancy is gone. It just doesn't make any sense. Look, stop brooding about it. This is my mess. Well, this mess...
is my creation. How so? They discharged you in the middle of the night. I signed myself out. Why? Doctor was going to be another hour. I'd had enough. I'd rather sleep in my own bed. Welcome home. I'm going to have a shower. Give me one. Yet you, it's a new cue. Don't know. Soft boiled eggs. Look, I don't want to talk about us tonight. The fact is, we're being blackmailed. So first things first. If we're going to deal with these creeps, then we have to put aside your... Folly. <laughs> Folly. <laughs> Weakness. Does it help if I say I'm sorry? Let's get some sleep. Yes, uh, this is Alan Chambers from Emergency. I, strictly speaking, shouldn't be ringing you, but I thought I'd let you know as a courtesy. We readmitted Susan Todd earlier this evening. Readmitted? Yes, she... She signed herself out last evening. Uh, her condition at the time was apparently stable. Uh, then, a few hours later, she collapsed at home around midnight. When she arrived back here by ambulance, she was profoundly shocked. She died half an hour ago. There'll have to be a, a post-mortem, of course. Good night. What? Susan Todd just died. <laughs> Mr. Todd, in cases of unexplained death, we have to proceed to a post-mortem. No. I can understand your feelings. There'll be no post-mortem on my wife. Under the Coroner's Act, where the cause of death is uncertain, we are legally compelled to carry out a post-mortem. Um, I need to talk to you. She's so upset about the car accident? No, she just wants to be alone. I don't like to hear her cry. Detective McLean. Hello, this is Valentina from Sputnik Tours. That's Stephanie. Excuse me. Stephanie, I'm afraid Mrs Todd has died. Yes. Today, I have received an official invitation asking you and your young man to come to Moscow as a guest of the Moscow Police Federation. So, it's all official. Congratulations. I see. 
You don't seem very pleased. No, I'm just at work at the moment. It's just a little bit difficult to speak. You might say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, do you mind if I call you tomorrow, please? Of course, do свидания. Do свидания. Yeah, um, I'm inquiring about a Mrs. Susan Todd. She's in with a miscarriage. Has she been discharged from the hospital yet? She has. Well, well. Silly girl. What a web we weave, eh? When first we practice to deceive. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Todd. I know this is a difficult time for you. This is my colleague, Dr. Hollis, who performed the post-mortem with me yesterday. Dr. Hollis and I found that your wife had recently had a termination of pregnancy. That's impossible, I would have known. I realise that this is not what you expected to hear, but the evidence that your wife had an abortion is undeniable. There were complications. We found a tear through the uterus into the bowel, which could only have been caused by abortion instruments. That led to peritonitis and ultimately septicemia, which proved fatal. How can something like that happen these days? Well, even in a modern termination clinic, it's still possible for a surgical instrument to pass through the uterus and damage the, the bowel. It's often a silent event. By that I mean the doctor may not even be aware that it's happened. So this was a, a botched abortion? Botched is perhaps too strong a word. Any surgical event has risks. So it's just tough luck for my wife. This case now goes to the coroner. He may or may not decide that there was wrongful conduct. Wrongful conduct. So why didn't you lot pick it up earlier? Well, for a start, we didn't know your wife had had a termination. She chose not to make that fact known to us. Secondly, she discharged herself from the hospital against medical advice. The doctor who performed the abortion, what'll happen to him? Well, again, it's up to the coroner. It would help if we knew who the abortionist actually was. I can't help you. I knew nothing about it. Bashed in some sort of pub brawl. You seem a bit preoccupied lately. I think a new case might help. I want you to check out an assault. The Crown Hotel last night. How the local police sort that out? I want you to. Here's a preliminary report. If anybody's after me, I've gone to the hospital. Mr. Todd, you have a visitor, a police officer who'd like to ask you a few questions. About a fight in a pub. Seems this one was a little different. Really? And you are? Detective McLean. No relation to Dr. Barry McLean, I suppose. 
Well, yes, actually, I'm his daughter. Oh, so Daddy sent you around to tidy things up? No, I was sent around by Detective Sergeant Hughes. Sister, could I have a word in private with Detective McLean? I was just leaving. So you're Barry's little girl. Well, the reason I've been assaulted, Detective McLean, is that I fell out with your father. I find that very hard to believe. Perhaps I can enlighten you. See, Daddy, he may be a highly regarded member of the community, but alas, last year he committed an indiscretion with a patient. Sexual indiscretion. And it gets worse. See, a photo of this unsavoury episode came into my possession. And as a concerned citizen, I told Daddy I was going to send it to the medical board. So what did the good doctor do? He broke into my office, removed my hard drives, and then he arranged to have me beaten up. I don't believe you. Don't? I won't. Have a chat with Dad, see how much he denies. Would you be part of a cover-up to protect your father? It's for you on line three. Myers. I'm calling from Pacific Command in Hawaii. Excuse me. Hi. I'm uh, Detective McLean. I was wondering if you could help me with an inquiry. Yeah. On March 14, was there a young girl admitted to this hospital with a possible case of meningococcus disease? No, we've had no cases this year. Are you sure? I have to keep records for the Department of Health and the last case we had was back in October last year but there's been none since then. All right. Thank you. Oh, Steph! I'm off to the races. How do I look? Wonderful. Is Dad in? Yep. Have a good time. Bye! Dad, can I have a word? Sure. In private? Investigating an assault, and the victim has made a number of allegations against you. Against me? Yeah. Well, who is this person? Mr. Victor Todd. Victor Todd? Assaulted? Well, I hope they did a bloody good job on him. Or did he fake his injuries? No, they're real. Someone has done a very good job on him. Look, I'm not a fan, but if Victor Todd was assaulted, then he had it coming. He's made four allegations against you. Well, we'll start with number four. Number four, the allegation is that you were the one who either assaulted him or you paid someone to do it. Not true. I have no idea who assaulted him. Number three allegation is... is that you broke into his office and stole the hard drive from his computer. Does your silence mean yes? Yes. Number two is that he has damaging material against you that he was going to send to the medical board. Oh, yes. And no. 
I'm the one. Is the material in question is a photograph that indicates that you had an affair with one of your patients. Hello, darling. I didn't know you were here. What? To better days. <laughs> Just see why your career has to suffer because of him. I'd be a hypocrite if I excused my own father. I swore an oath to uphold the law. You know what, if I present this evidence against him, it is going to kill my family. Yeah, well... That's his problem. You know what, I could probably forgive him. I could probably forgive him for the robbery, but I can't forgive him what he's done to my mum. It's your decision in the end. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. to Hawaii. <laughs> You're right. You're serious. Peter, I've made a decision to resign. Well, from the case? No, from the force. Well, why? It's personal issues. Look, whatever your personal issues, you've got to think this through. My decision is final. Well, look, do yourself a favour. Take 24 hours and think it over. When are you discharging me? Possibly at the weekend. No, I'm not interested. I signed myself out. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Your wife signed herself out a week ago against medical advice. That didn't go well. Careful. I might turn nasty. Sister, just give me the papers to sign. I don't think she likes me. I hope one day we might see you back. Thanks for everything.
Stephanie. I want to let you know that we got the results of Susan Todd's autopsy. And? So you'd just like to know Mum's been cleared of Susan Todd's death? The police discovered that she was framed. I guess you already knew that. Hello. The autopsy's cleared you of any responsibility to do with Susan Todd's death. Oh. Just the thought that I might have had anything to do with that woman miscarrying. Yeah, how about you? How are you coping? Me? Brad's been recalled back to Hawaii. Detective McLean. Yeah. I'm hearing rumours that Vic Todd is on the warpath. If I was you, I'd watch my back. Yeah. We need to do some further interviews with you in regard to your wife's traffic accident. Why? Just routine inquiry, sir. Would you be free to come down to the station with us now? I've just buried my wife. Would Thursday morning suit you? Okay. Right, sir. We'll see you Thursday morning, nine o'clock. Did Detective McLean send you around to harass me? No one's harassing you, sir. And no, Detective McLean did not send us around. Yeah, right. Airport scenes. You want to say goodbye now? Do I have a say in this? I guess not.
Come in. Hello, Brad. Take a seat. No, thank you. I'll stand. I'm leaving tomorrow. Yes, I heard. Sorry to see you go. Just so there's no misunderstanding, I'm here on my own initiative. She's sacrificing her career purely to save your sorry ass. As a doctor and as a father, you're about as low as they come, sir. Barry McLean. I wish to notify the medical board of a breach of ethics. Could you wait here a moment, please? Hello, I'm John Merrill, the board secretary. Barry McLean. Could you come through to my office? McLean, the medical board has held a view for many years that for a doctor to engage in a sexual relationship with a patient is a violation of trust and abuse of his position, even if the patient is a consenting adult. Whatever the changes may have been in societal values in the past few decades, the medical board adheres to this view very strongly. Accordingly, that we have determined that you should be disqualified from a medical practice for one year. After that time, you may appeal to the board for reinstatement. These proceedings are now closed. months suspension. The only penalty they inflict on me is nothing compared to the penalty I inflicted on you. I'm truly sorry, Steph. Forgive me. You were the one who taught me about morals, and you violated every one of them. I accept your apology. Especially in view of this. But you're just going to have to give me some time.
And how would you say in Russian? Good morning. Uh, Dobre utro. Goodbye. Do svidania. Do svidania. Do svidania. Yeah, do svidania. <laughs> Spasiba. пропустил суд в Владивосток. Вот у меня с релика есть на мотоцикле в Москву. Да. Вы говорите по-русски? А, немножко. Вы что, собираетесь проехать на мотоцикле до Москвы? Да. Скажите, вы едете одни? Да. Девушка, вы знаете, что Сибирь легкомысленнее признает? Э, я готова. Девушка, если вы были моя дочь, я бы вас ни за что не пустил. Все, все таки э, по, поеду. Ну что ж, счастливого пути. Поезжайте с Богом. Спасибо. Fading 